It's the question everyone's been asking. What is math like in Virginia? I brought paper and Sharpie in case we want to try some Virginia math before we pack it in today. But let's not get too hasty. We're here to learn about Virginia math. This is apparently a state edition of Larson's Algebra 1. This is an 8th grade textbook in the American education system, and I've seen a few of these with special sort of a state alignments. I've seen Virginia, Texas, and California. I'm not 100% sure what it's all about and what the differences are, except for the fact that I know this is, I guess, targeted towards Virginia's specific state standards for mathematics education in the 8th grade. So I figured it was kind of a curiosity. It's, it's really funny to me, the idea of having special state editions of these big uh, popular math textbooks. So why don't we take a look inside and uh, see what we can learn about Virginia and what sets the Virginia math apart from math elsewhere. You've got your typical about the authors section here. Um, and then a special section here for Virginia teachers and uh, reviewers here. So I guess this is just specifically Virginia people um, looking this over to see how well it fits the Virginia curriculum. All of the table of contents here look pretty similar to me. I am not an expert in the... Um, you know, I'm not an expert in Larson's Algebra 1, but it is a textbook I've used a decent amount. You can see all these chapters in the table of contents have this Virginia Mathematics Standards of Learning Prerequisite Skills section, which obviously is not something, let me zoom in so you can see that, right? You can see that Virginia Mathematics Standards of Learning. That's not something you would see in the non-Virginia versions, obviously. But every chapter seems to have those, so we'll take a look at what the heck that's all about. I imagine that's just outlining what uh, each chapter is, is doing to be in accordance with the Virginia Mathematics Standards of Learning. And then here you got a big Virginia section. Look, right, when you open up the textbook, what does this say? What are math standards? The Virginia Standards of Learning for Mathematics outline what you should know and be able to do at each grade level. Your teacher uses these standards of learning to design a course of instruction that will help you develop the skills and knowledge you need for success on standardized tests, as well as in everyday life and the workplace. How will I learn the standards? Your textbook is closely aligned to the Virginia Standards of Learning for Mathematics. Every time you learn new information or practice a skill, you are mastering one of the Virginia standards. And then you get a nice picture there of um, Thomas Jefferson's Monticello home, is that how it's pronounced? In Charlottesville, Virginia. Wow. Virginia picks in the special Virginia edition of Algebra 1. This is really cool. And then it looks like in these next handful of pages, we're actually just getting a detailed look at the um, Virginia standards, right? These are the Virginia math standards. You got equations and inequalities and the skills that a student should have in these different areas. Justifying steps with axioms and properties. That's a good one. We've got equations and inequalities and then functions, statistics, zeros of a function over here. The student, given a situation in a real-world context, will analyze a relation to determine whether or not a direct or inverse variation exists. Ah, that's interesting. Box and whisker plots. I've seen statistics show up in Algebra 1 books before, and I'm not sure that I've seen box and whisker plots, though. Usually you see a little bit of stats with like linear regression when it comes to applications of lines and whatnot. Usually see some mean, median, and mode. Um, I don't know that I've seen box and whisker plots, so if this has box and whisker plots, that would be interesting. I would definitely want to compare to the non-Virginia edition. Then you've got countdown to EOC. I'm not sure what that means. Countdown to EOC. Day one, day two. This is just going, uh, you know, week by week. End of course, maybe. I would think like end of year, EOY would make more sense. These look like just nice daily practices, um, you know, for all your weeks of school. Is that what it is? You got 18 weeks. Um, how many weeks total? 24 weeks. That's uh, like six weeks or excuse me, yeah, like six months of school. So I guess that makes sense. This whole section is not something that I've seen in the other editions of Algebra 1. And also this is new, the skills readiness. You can see also, if you notice, um, the pages here are labeled VA52, VA52, VA53. We are in the thick of the, I guess, Virginia exclusive part of this 
book. So one has to wonder what this would look like in comparison to the other state editions. Let's look at these order of operations. D are, you, are you good at Virginia math? Can you do this? Evaluate each expression. 16 plus 4 divided by 4. 4 divided by 4. You got to do that first, right? Division comes first. It's 17. 4 over 4 is 1 plus 16 is 17. Then you got this guy. 4 times 3 squared here at the end. That's the only tricky bit, right? You got to do the 3 squared first because exponents come before the multiplication. So 4 times 9 is 36 plus 5 is 41. I think I'd be cut out for Algebra 1 in Virginia, but who knows? It could catch you by surprise. So here's the start of the chapter. And oh, you know what? I wonder, I wonder if EOC is end of chapter. Now, now that can't be. The first chapter can't cover like functions and box and whisker plots. You see some box and whisker plots right here, which is pretty cool. Um, I, so I assume that actually is going to show up in the main, you know, curriculum of the textbook. End of chapter would make sense, but there's a lot of reasons why that wouldn't make sense because you're not going to spend 16 weeks, you know, 16 weeks on one chapter. No, no chance. Nice full color book, you know, I mean, this is Larson's Algebra 1, which is a perfectly fine um, algebra textbook that has a ton of content. Um, in the last Math Library episode, we took a look at the end of this book, um, not this particular version, but just the end of Larson's Algebra 1 and actually Larson's Algebra 2 as well. And uh, we saw how they have New Game Plus at the end of this book, which is really cool. See if I can find any more Virginia stuff in here while we flip through this book. So you see, what I'm a little confused about is that if you look at the table of contents, it says on page 552, you're going to have prerequisite skills and Virginia Mathematics Standards of Learning. I'm just not sure what that Virginia Mathematics Standards of Learning um, tag or icon means, because I flip to this page, page 552, and it just looks like your typical cover page for a chapter of Larson's Algebra 1. You've got nothing at all, unless I'm totally blind, nothing at all about Virginia. All I see is stuff about whatever this type of cat is, an African cat, apparently. Let's do the vocabulary check, though. Let's do some Virginia math together. What does it say for the vocab check? Are we prepared for chapter nine of Virginia Algebra 1? Terms that have the same variable part. Ooh, wow, I love that language. Um, those terms are called like terms. Uh, this is always how I like to refer to like terms, right? They're terms that have the same variable part. And I'm not sure that I picked that definition up from Larson's book. I'm not sure if that's how they're always described. Uh, you know, uh, like terms is a pretty simple thing, so I can't say that I've read a lot of definitions of it in books. Uh, but the definition I've just come to use over the years is that it's terms that have the same variable part. It's very um, broad, right? So x squared y, that's the same variable part as 5x squared y. You wouldn't say the same variable because that's a little too vague. 2x and 4x squared have the same variable, but not the same variable part because one is x and the other one's x squared, you know. So uh, what's the other one? For a function f of x, a question mark is an x value for which f of x equals zero. That would be a root or a solution or a zero. Lots of words for that type of thing. So I have to say I'm a little disappointed. It seems like most of the Virginia special stuff uh, was just all at the beginning of the book. It kind of was just all there and then bam, you know, no more special Virginia content. Um, that I can see just in, in like a brief reading, a brief scan through of this book. Uh, like I said, the box and whisker plots, that's a little surprising to me. I don't honestly remember the book covering box and whisker plots. It's possible that's unique to Virginia standards. So let me go look at a non-Virginia edition of Larson's Algebra 1 and let's see if that has box and whisker plots. Here is the Common Core edition of Larson's Algebra 1. This is not specified to like any state standard or anything like that. It's just the Common Core edition. So that's very cool. Um, let's take a look inside and see if it covers box and whisker plots. In the Larson version, it was, or excuse me, in the Virginia version, it was in like chapter 13 or something, right? Uh, okay. So there's definitely some differences in the layout. 
This is the Common Core edition. That's the Virginia edition. So, you know, these are kind of two steps removed total from your core Algebra 1, because one's a special edition Virginia, one special Common Core edition. Uh, but here in Chapter 10, the Data Analysis section, you can see that, in fact, they do have box and whisker plots on page 685. So I don't have a non-Common Core edition copy of this book on hand to compare to, um, but I'm guessing that that has box and whisker plots also, and I just was not aware of that. Yeah, there you go. Interpret a box and whisker plot here. Um, so they both have that. That is not exclusive for Virginia students. We can look at the start of this book just so you can get a sense of how the Virginia edition was different, right? You look here, the advisors and reviewers. Obviously, you don't have people special to Virginia in that section. And all of these have common core tags at the top, not Virginia standard tags. And it also had some special common core junk at the start of the book, if you saw. We got all these additional lessons here. Um, correlation to standards for mathematical content, right? So these are like the common core standards rather than giving you the dump of Virginia standards. In fact, this collection of common core standards has the standards for Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2, it looks like. That is interesting. Oh, and then for the countdown, and I'll have to get my hands on a normal edition of Algebra 1 um, because I, I just don't remember this sort of countdown thing being at the start of the normal edition of the book, but maybe it did have a countdown like this. This says countdown to mastery. The Virginia version said countdown to EOC. This says countdown to mastery. That's weird. Let's get a couple of these. What is the next term in the pattern? Negative one? one half, negative fourth, one eighth, you can see the sign is alternating and um, we have repeated divisions by two, right? So to get to the next term, we would divide by negative two. So the answer would be negative one over 16, part B. Then you have a little bit of the uh, skills readiness here. You know, again, the idea is take a look at this and see if you're ready for the course. Ideally, you should be able to do all of this, but most people, before they take Algebra 1, are probably going to be missing a few of these things. Gives you some idea of where you might want to spend a little bit of time before the school year, if you're prepared enough to take a look at your book um, before the school year begins. You can also get a good snapshot of the differences between the Virginia and Common Core edition by looking at the backs. This is the Virginia edition, and this is the Common Core edition. And you can see that the Virginia edition has 13 chapters, Common Core edition only has 11, and their sections start to deviate right in chapter two. The Virginia edition covers properties of real numbers, whereas chapter two in the Common Core edition is solving linear equations. Now, some of these differences might not just be because, oh, this is a Virginia edition, so it's different. Because remember, we're comparing it to something that's already a special edition, the Common Core edition. So clearly, I need to get a regular copy of this darn book in my collection. And let me know if your state has a special edition of Larson Algebra 1. I may or may not be interested in collecting them all.